Thank you, Lucy. Welcome to our CHIP webinar. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, and I hope you will find the information useful. The webinar will be split into a variety of topics. First of all, there will be an introduction to chromatin and CHIP with background information about the technique. I will then run through the protocol step by step. There will be more information about selecting an antibody to use in CHIP. I will then discuss optimization requirements with information on troubleshooting and how problems can be resolved. And in the final section, Miriam will give more information on protocol resources. Let's start by introducing chromatin and how CHIP can be used. The function of chromatin is to package DNA so it fits within the cell, strengthen DNA to assist with mitosis and meiosis, and help control gene expression. In eukaryotes, chromatin is a complex of DNA, RNA, and proteins. The major protein component is histones, although many other chromosomal proteins also play a prominent role. 147 base pairs of DNA is wrapped around the histone octamer to form the fundamental unit of chromatin, the nucleosome. This consists of two copies each of histones H2A, H2B, H3, and H4. Nucleosomes are compacted further to form the chromatin fiber by H1 and non-histone proteins. N and C terminal tails of the histone proteins extend from the nucleosome core and a large number of amino acid residues can be covalently modified with chemical groups in processes such as acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation, ubiquitination, citrullination. Cis-transproline isomerization results in a conformational change of the histone tail. These modifications function either by disrupting chromatin contacts or by affecting the recruitment of non-histone proteins to chromatin. A number of enzymes have been identified which catalyze the addition and remo removal of these modifications to histone proteins. Histone H3 is the most characterized histone protein and the majority of these modifications exist in the N-terminal tail. The principle of CHIP is simple. It allows the selective enrichment of a chromatin fraction containing a specific antigen and the specific DNA associated is identified. The most common purpose is to analyze the presence of a histone modification or chromatin-associated protein at genomic loci. Specific antibodies are used to determine the abundance of that antigen at one or more locations in the genome in vivo. Antibodies are used to pull out the proteins or protein modification of interest and identify their localization in the genome. I'm going to run through some examples to help illustrate this. CHIP can allow you to compare the enrichment of a protein or protein modification at different loci. In this example, histone H3K9 acetylation is being analyzed across a small selection of active and inactive loci. The bar chart shows that this mark is enriched at the active genes analyzed. CHIP can also allow you to map a protein or protein modification across specific loci of interest. In this example, the active RNA polymerase is being mapped across the gamma actin gene with an antibody against phosphoserine 5 on RNA polymerase 2. The target localizes to the 5' prime end of the gamma actin gene, which is characteristic of this target. And finally, CHIP can also allow you to quantify a protein or protein modification at genomic loci over a time course. In this example, citrullinated H3 is being analyzed at the inducible PS2 promoter. Cells are induced with estrogen and samples taken every 10 minutes. The cells from each time point are used for all individual chip experiments with a specific antibody. The histone modification shows a cyclic presence at the promoter with highest levels of histone H3 citrullination at 40 minutes. There are two general procedures for performing chip experiments native chip and cross-linking chip. The choice is dependent on your experimental aims and starting material. There are key differences between the two techniques. In native chip, proteins are not cross-linked and native chromatin is a substrate. Fragmentation is achieved by micrococcal nuclease digestion and using enzymatic digestion, it is possible to obtain nucleosome-based resolution of approximately 150 base pairs. Native CHIP is only suitable for proteins stably associated to chromatin, typically limiting this to histones and histone modifications. 
In cross-linking chip, proteins are cross-linked to DNA and formaldehyde is typically used, which is a reversible cross-linker. Chromatin is fragmented by sonication to generate random fragments of between 200 and 1,000 base pairs. As the proteins are cross-linked, histones, histone modifications and chromatin-associated factors can be analyzed. XGIP is standardly used at ABCAM during antibody characterization. There are a variety of pros and cons for each technique. In native chip, antibody specificity is predictable as the epitope is not affected by fixation. This also results in efficient immunoprecipitation as the antibody is able to bind effectively to the target antigen. It is possible to fragment DNA to a nucleosome size of approximately 175 base pairs giving high resolution and more accurate mapping of the target antigen. However, native chip is generally only suitable for histone proteins as chromatin-associated factors are not tightly associated to DNA and are likely to be lost during sample preparation. Using an enzyme will also result in some selective nuclease digestion as a micrococcal nuclease will favor some genomic sequences leading to unequal digestion. Nucleosome rearrangement can also occur as the nucleosomes are not fixed. Ultimately, care must be taken throughout the process as interactions are not stably fixed. Crosslinking chip is good for non-histone proteins that may bind weakly or indirectly to DNA as crosslinking will fix these interactions. Crosslinking minimizes nucleosomal rearrangements as interactions are stabilized and there will be less variability between experiments. XGIP is pre preferable for yeast and other organisms where native chromatin is difficult to prepare. DNA is fragmented randomly by sonication. However, you may observe inefficient antibody binding due to epitope disruption, and it may be necessary to test a variety of different antibodies to find the best one. Transient interactions may be fixed, leading up to artifactual results. XGIP produces lower resolution maps as chromatin is prepared to larger fragment sizes and the target localized to a larger region. Next, I will run through the protocol and detail what controls to include. The CHIP protocol is relatively straightforward. If you're performing an XGIP, cells are treated to cross-linked DNA and proteins. For both techniques, a unicellular cell suspension is prepared in lysis buffer. The chromatin is then fragmented by micrococcal nuclease digestion for NGIP or sonication if performing XGIP. Antibodies are then used to immunoprecipitate the chromatin fragments where your target of interest is present. The subsequent DNA is then purified and analyzed to determine the regions where the target is enriched relative to the input DNA. If performing XGIP, cross-linking is the first step and this is required to stabilize protein-protein and protein-DNA interactions. Histones themselves don't generally need to be cross-linked, but if your target protein is not specifically bound to DNA, CHIP will be less effective without cross-linking. The purpose is to fix the antigen to the chromatin binding site and fix molecular interactions at a point in time. Formaldehyde generates reversible protein-protein links and allows you to study histone proteins and chromatin-associated proteins. If it, the chromatin isn't fixed, then it's highly likely the associated proteins will be lost. A good starting concentration is 0.75% of formaldehyde for cells in culture or 1.5% for tissues. This is added directly to the cells if using cell culture or to a cell suspension after disaggregation if tissue is a starting material. The optimal time is between 2 and 30 minutes. The cells are then washed with ice cold PBS and resuspended in lysis buffer.